Good morning. Good morning. You're a good looking group. Beautiful, handsome, and smart. Madam President and Dean of the Mohawk School of Medicine, members of the Board of Trustees, members of the Executive Leadership Team, distinguished faculty, staff, parents, family, and friends, and to the class of 2017. I'm honored and delighted to be with you on this very important and special occasion. To each and every one of you receiving a degree today, congratulations. This is your day. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Be happy. Take a long, deep breath and take it all in. But tomorrow, you must be prepared to roll up your sleeves because the world is waiting for talent men and women like you to lead it to a better place. Now, I didn't grow up in a big city like Atlanta or Montgomery or Birmingham or New York or Washington, D.C. I grew up in rural Alabama, 50 miles from Montgomery, outside of a little place called Troy. Some of you heard of Troy? No, you don't know where it is. <laughs> My father was a sharecropper, a tenant farmer. But back in 1944, when I was only four years old, and I do remember when I was four, Roger, how many of you remember when you were four? Well, what happened to the rest of us? <laughs> a man sold my father 110 acres of land. We still own this land today. <laughs> On this farm, we raised a lot of cotton, corn, peanuts, hogs, cows, and chicken. I know as graduate, some of you probably like to eat chicken, right? But you don't know anything about raising chicken. <laughs> I fell in love with raising chickens. I really did. As a little boy, when they sat in here and was set to take the fresh eggs, mark them with a pencil, place them under this setting hen, and wait for three long weeks for the little chicks to hatch. Some of you may be saying, now, John Lewis, why do you mark those fresh eggs with a pencil before you place them under this setting hen? Well, from time to time, another hen will get on that same nest, and there will be some more fresh eggs. You have to be able to tell the fresh eggs from the eggs that were already under the setting hen. Do you follow me? So when the little chicks were hatch, I would fool the setting hen, I would cheat on these setting hens, and when I look back, it was not the right thing to do. It was not the moral thing to do. It was not the most loving thing to do. It was not the most nonviolent thing to do. It was not, not the most democratic thing to do. But I was never quite able to save $18.98 to order the most inexpensive incubator or hatcher from the Southern Roebuck store. Are any of you old enough to remember the Southern Roebuck catalog? That big book, you, you're too young. That heavy book, that thick book, some people call it the whoosh book. I wish I had this, I wish I had that, so I just kept on wishing. As a little child, I wanted to be a minister. I wanted to preach the gospel. But along the way, from some time along the way, when one of my chickens would get sick, I played doctor. But I was convinced that I should be a minister and not a doctor. So with the help of my brothers and sisters and cousins, we would gather all of our chickens together in the chicken yard. And my brothers and sisters and cousins were lying there outside of the chicken yard, but they would help make up the audience, the congregation. And I would start speaking or preaching. And when I look back, some of these chickens would bow their heads. Some of these chickens would shake their heads. 
they never quite said amen. But I am convinced that some of those chickens that I preached to in the 40s and the 50s tended to listen to me much better than some of my colleagues listen to me today in the Congress. As a matter of fact, most of those chickens was just a little more productive. At least they produce eggs. <laughs> Growing up during those days, none of us have heard of preventive care. The term didn't have any meaning for my family. And even if it did exist, my family could not afford it. Medicine was just not an option for us. Our pre-existing condition was poverty and hunger. When we thought about our health, we were preparing to die. We never had the luxury to prepare for life. My mother, my father, my grandparents, and great-grandparents had burial insurance. They weren't thinking about living. The insurance man would travel from farm to farm, and people would give him their nickels and dimes. We thought we were handling our responsibility in death, but it was a scam. This was the hard truth for many families across our country, but especially in the South, and especially among poor African-American families. Before the passage of the Affordable Care Act, our health care system had unbelievable and great disparities. Access to care for millions of Americans remained just out of our reach. At the same time, our country was and is the prior creator of some of the greatest institutions of health and learning the world has ever known. Because of Mo House Med School, the Center for Disease Control, and other major institutions, this city, the city of Atlanta, is the home to some of the best doctors and researchers in the world. Everybody knows, except one American leader who shall remain nameless, <laughs> that Atlanta is not crumbling. Mohawk's Med School is not dying. This school is very much alive. In many ways, we are setting the pace for the future. If we really want to be truly progressive, we want to stand on the side of justice and democracy. There are some people today in America and especially in Washington, want to take us back. We've come too far, we made too much progress, and we're not going back, we're going forward. <laughs> we must not stop. We must not give up. And to every American man, woman, and child in this country, has the care they need at the price they can afford. I believe in my heart, I really do, that access to affordable care is a right and not a privilege. We all need health care. It should not depend on the size of your wallet or the digits in your zip code. We must make sure that all Americans who are sick and suffering have the ability to receive basic Medicare. It's a right and not a privilege. And as long as I'm in the Congress, out of the Congress, I will fight for that right. It's part of my calling. It is part of my mission. In 2009 and 2010, the United States House of Representatives and the Senate were trying to find a way to address health disparity. Now, what does that mean? 
Every family at some point will experience injury or illness. But no mother or father to have to lay awake at night worrying whether a child will recover while they're also worrying about how to pay the child's medical bill. Look, we were trying to pass the Affordable Care Act. Angry mobs met us on the steps of the Capitol. They harassed some of us. They called us names. But we didn't give up. We didn't give in. We kept the faith. We passed that bill, and President Barack Obama signed it into law. And now we have a piece of legislation pending that the majority in the House passed. The Senate going to consider it, but it's mean spirit. It is mean spirit. It want to cut Medicare, Medicaid, in order to give a tax break for the welfare. That's not right, that's not fair, and that's not just, and some of us will not stand for it. So I say to you, as you prepare to leave Morehouse School of Medicine, you must not give up. You must not give in. Get out there and work. Do your job. But if you see something that is not right, something that is not fair, or just speak up, speak out, and find a way to get in the way. When I was growing up in Soto Science, they said white men, colored men, white women, colored women, white waiting, colored waiting. I would ask my mother, my father, my grandparents, why? They would say, boy, that's the way it is. Don't get in the way. Don't get in trouble. But I was inspired by Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King Jr. and many others to get in the way, to get in trouble. I got in trouble, good trouble, necessary trouble. As doctors and men and women of medicine, you must get in trouble. Good trouble, necessary trouble. You're smart. You're gifted. Go out there. Be bold. Be courageous. And I would like to see some of you young men and women of medicine run for elected office. We have so many doctors on the other side in the Congress. We need some on the right side in the Congress. <laughs> so look, when I was very young, had all of my hair, <laughs> and a few pounds lighter, I won't show you that I have a little less hair, I was arrested 40 times. Since I've been in Congress, another five times. Jail, beaten, left bloody, and unconscious. Almost died on a bridge in Selma for the right to vote. But a group of nuns at a local hospital in Selma took care of us, 17 of us. And a few months ago, I had an opportunity to travel to Rochester, New York, and visit the mother house, where three of the nuns are now retired. They saw me. They're feeble. They recognized me. They said, hi, John. Hi, John. How you doing? So thank you, sister. Thank you, sister. They hugged me, and I cried with them. Wherever you see someone need help, 
lend him a helping hand. Do your best and do it so well that no one else can do it any better. I wish you well. Go with faith and hope with one love. Thank you very much. Thank you, Congressman Lewis. Let's give him one more round of applause. <laughs> With Vice President and Executive Vice Dean for Research and Academic Administration, Dr. Harris Sucker, please join me for the conferring of the honorary degree to Congressman Lewis. I'd also ask um, Ms. Susan Grant, representing the board, to please stand, and I will also ask Representative Calvin Smyrie if he will also join us. Congressman Lewis, would you please stand? For your numerous contributions to the political landscape, for your pursuit to guarantee all Americans are treated justly, and for your persistence in ensuring that all Americans have access to health care. Morehouse School of Medicine is proud to confer the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. Also as a symbol of this honor, I will direct that you be vested in the hood that symbolizes that of the degree and we will present you with this diploma. Now you have all the rights and privileges. 